Yeah, I'll stop. I'm going back to the series of kids. Now, generally, when I walk out in the woods anytime, I always have a haversack on. I've been doing that for 30 years now. And how that all got started is I was watching um, Mountain Man movie, and I was noticing that the, you know, these guys carry stuff on their person. And I used to carry a cup with me because I'd stop at the local creek and get a drink and, you know, just... I was like, you know what? I think I'd like to start carrying a canteen and stuff with me because with the canteen cup and everything, you know, I have a, a way to cook something if I want to eat something. And then it, I was out hunting one day. It was like 20 degrees, and I was on the top of a, a ledge a cliff. And just so happened I just put some stuff in the pack and I had a can of Beanie Weenies and my little stove and stuff like that. And it was a nice day to sit down and have a hot lunch and a good cup of coffee. It was like, I'm going home. I'm going to set this bag up, which was just a, it was just a, a junk bag. I don't even know where it came from. And then one of my son's um, ex-girlfriends gave me a Old Navy camouflage pocketbook. It looked like a duffel bag, but it had a lot of pockets. And it was great because it would hold my canteen, my cup, a little survival kit. Now, so on and so forth. It was great. So, I started carrying that, and at last, that was, that bag was on me so long, it was blood stained on the back from carrying it around my, my uh, game pouch, that it was actually rotting it through from the, the blood. So. so then I moved up, and I made some things, and did some things. I finally wound up making this, um, this leather haversack. You've all seen this before. So now this haversack weighs in right around five pounds. Okay. So outside of my belt kit, which is the next size up from the knife, this is what you're going to see me carrying on a, on a, a regular basis. So first off, on the strap, my buddy Donovan, too, a couple weeks ago, gifted me this... Um, Whitetail cutlery squirrel Brady to go with that squirrel Brady uh, frost knife that I reviewed. And Whitetail cutlery is squirrel Brady. I haven't done a review yet on this knife, but it's a beautiful, beautiful knife. So, Donovan, there you go, buddy. It's going to be sitting right on my hunting bag. So, that's right off the bat. I always have my belt knife and I always have my pocket knife. But now I'll have this fixed blade here. It'll be right here, you know, ready to go. Let's see what we got in the bag. Now, once again, I want to reiterate that this is your best kit right here. What's in here is just going to help me get through what I need to get through. There's a bunch of them. First off, let's start here. This time of year, it's still warm enough outside. If I'm lost somewhere in northeastern Pennsylvania, there's creeks and lakes everywhere. So I carry a small emergency fishing kit. Get this stuff back. I've got an accessory kit from an MRE. What's in here is um, coffee, salt, toilet paper. Book of matches, creamer, and a wet nap. It, they're cute to have. They're inconvenient, or yeah, I mean they're very convenient. But you got coffee, sugar, creamer, um, a wet nap, a little bit of chewing gum, and matches. So you got a little nice little kit in itself, just you know, for a boot kit. Something to, you know, after dinner, or whatever, make you feel a little more at home. Then I have another piece from another MRE and it's got uh, salt and pepper, a really good spoon, and some paper in it, a napkin, which, you know, can be used for anything. I don't forget, I am diabetic, so I do have to carry a certain amount of food with me in case I do get lost. So I carry one MRE main, this is vegetable lasagna, 
most carb for my bang. I have other ones, but that's just the one I was in there. I carry some loose uh, black and white fire starter cotton balls. Now this, I'm not going to open it up because it's huge. This is not a Mylar blanket. This is a Mylar garbage bag. Storage bag. It's the same size as a... Uh, what is the size of that bag? I think it's a 33 or a 40 gallon garbage bag. So it can be used as a tent, it can be used as a partial two poncho, partial shelter piece, poncho. Many, 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 many uses for this. You see how small it folds up? I could fold it smaller, but I just have it. So I carry that in there because that's a, an all around element, is what I call it. And I carry this in there now. This is a kit given to me by um, JV Outdoors. Now with this little kit, what I have here is a small frying pan if I need it. Or something to signal with if I need to. I can polish that up, signal with it. Okay. In here now I have an emergency blanket that is an irregular you know, emergency blanket. It's a 52 by 84, so it's the bigger one. I've got a bunch of shavings from Fatwood that just rides in there. I got another small emergency fishing kit with jigs and stuff. I got some wax juke twine from black and white fire starters. I've also got some of their yellow fire rope. Okay. So in this kit itself, it's it's basically a self-contained survival kit. I got some uh, twine and needles. Trying to get through to everything. Got some waterproof matches and some Kevlar thread. I got a mini blade in there. Piece of fire stick. This is a survival kit in itself, so. Feral rod. Over on this side from uh, hiking deep, and this, this compass does work exceptional. I got a, uh, a button compass. There's some uh, bank line and what is this? Oh, cotton balls. So that's all what I got in this kit. So I've got a definite fire kit and definite survival kit if I need it. Already in my kit. And the bottom of this tin can also be used to fry and cook. So I have multiple, multiple options here. Okay, thank you very much, JV. It was nice for you to send this over. It's going to come in very handy. You'll see a lot of these self-contained kits I have that uh, they work for a multitude of things. At the uh, Dollar Tree, I found this paracord. It's not the best in the world, but it's about a 150 pound strength. It's good for tying stuff up with. That goes in there too. A bright color so I can see it at night and I don't have to be falling over it. But I'm trying not to get hurt. I'm not trying to be stealthy. I'm trying not to get hurt. Also in this kit, I have a small espit stove. This is the one I carried in the service. This stove is from 1982. It just folds out like that. You put your respite in there and put your pot on top. I've cooked entire breakfasts on this stove. It's got so many memories, it's beyond belief.
What else we got in here? Oh, we have another one of them spoon accessory kits. So I have to remember to take that out. Don't need that much of it. I do have an iron uh, cooking set, Boy Scout type. In the bottom, I have 25 yards of bank line, 36. Okay, it's coming down to that. I do have a match case. Yeah, I have a lot of redundancy and fire in all my kits. Now, connected to the bag itself, I have a Swiss Army knife. I have a flashlight, a little rail back. Okay. Oh, I have my old match kit from when I was a kid. So I'll get this in there closer. This is from when I was a, a toddler kid. And I have a uh, six inch by half inch barrel rod. Now my main part of my kit is uh, I have a GSI cup. And there I have also what they call a Fred. This is uh, an eating tool with a can opener on it and stuff. And I have a one quart single wall bottle. That's the bank line to hang stuff up with. So that that is the most uh, that is the gist of the uh, haversack kit. Yeah, there's a lot in there. But it's going to affect my survival over the course of whatever. I have had occasions, even hunting with my brother, where he's taken off and he's gotten turned around and hasn't come back for hours. And I kind of got stuck out there with all lunch. I almost got stuck out there all night because he wasn't sure where he was and couldn't get out. So it's uh, really imperative that I carry enough stuff to where I'm sure, and this is the way you should think about it too, where you're sure and I'm sure that we're, we're getting out of there. There's no doubt in your mind you're going to, you're getting a fire. There's no doubt in your mind you're going to have a shelter. There's no doubt in your mind you might eat. And you've got a way to, to get water. Okay, so that that's... The way I look at it is that's what a kit's supposed to do. It's supposed to give you that much. Hang on. That's what a kit is supposed to do. It's supposed to give you that peace of mind that you can get back, no matter what, with that kit. And as you see, I can get back no matter what with this kit. If I can't, well, then I better stop practicing when I'm preaching here and just give up. But you've got to be, even the unskilled, can make it with this kit. And to be honest with you, now that it's repacked, I mean, I've got tons of room in that haversack. If I wanted to put more gear in and more equipment, I could, which I'm probably going to add a tarp here very shortly. I ruined my, uh, at a uh, Walmart blue tarp, the 5x7s, I ruined it, so I got to go replace that. But that'll go back in here when I'm done. So that's the whole arrangement. That haversack sits on my shoulder. Like so. I made the strap a little bit wider so it's a little more comfortable. 
The knife sits here, sits flat against my chest. If I need it, right there. I am left-handed, so you know it's a right-handed case. So. But yeah, that's uh, that's the haversack kit. Like I said to me now, if you're going to have a kit and you're going to run around the woods and put up with that weight, make sure that that kit's going to get you back where you need to go. It's not just, you know, I got some stuff. No, it's, it's a comprehensive kit. So, this is Tom. I do thank you for your time and your patience. I hope you're enjoying this part two of this series. And uh, part three, I think we'll look at my uh, around town belt bag. Part four, we'll be looking at some canned kits that I made myself. Part five, we'll be looking probably at the Pathfinder kit or something like that. And then six would probably be my entire camping setup. So, Tom, I want to thank you for your time and your patience. And we'll see uh, you guys. Oh, don't forget to share this out. I'm sorry. But we will see you guys on the next one.